Chapter 7. More Than What Meets the Eye Present Mike wouldn't be ashamed to admit that he was glad he didn't have to go on patrol that evening, nor did he have to attend his radio show, because yes, Aizawa was wrong, he did have backup plans for when his hero life took priority over his various other jobs, and with that, came backup radio hosts. It was almost a shame it hadn't been a Friday. He only played non-stop music on Fridays, so there was really no need in him being there at the radio station, but it was a Wednesday, so never mind. That day sure had been eventful, and the following few days were bound to not be much sanctuary. They'd only just gotten rid of the press, and now they'll be back at it again. It was like the media were flies, and their fly spray wasn't as effective as the packet said it was. This was one of the reasons he chose to stay behind at UA's main campus after school was ended early. The longer he could postpone leaving having to run into the hordes of reporters, the better. Another reason was so he could have something to do whilst he waited for the hospital to give him the all-clear to check up on his friend Aizawa. It had been rather distressing seeing his old school friend so bloodied and bruised like that. Anyway, someone had to sweep the school to make sure everyone had gone home before the police could start their investigations. There were only a few third years lagging behind anyway, taking advantage of the chaos to spend some extra time with the school's resources before the day was up. This mainly involved the support classes, but no change there. It had always been difficult to get away from their workbenches. So, when Yamato wandered up to Principal Nezu's office, he was pretty convinced the school was empty, and was pleased to report so. Good evening, President Mike, Nezu chimed happily as Yamada entered the office. Hey, Principal Nezu, he replied with equal enthusiasm. Just to give you a heads up, the school seems clear from top to bottom if you want to let the police do whatever they need to do. Ah, uh, yes. Did you check the entire school? Yamada hesitated. Did I miss someone, he guessed. He checked everywhere he could have thought of where a student might have been. One of your first years, it would appear, Nezu informed him. He frowned. Who? Izuku Midoriya. Okay, that was a little off. Sign language kid? The principal waved him over to his desk, where his beady eyes were transfixed on his computer screen. Present Mike jogged over in utmost curiosity. But, when his own eyes rested on what Principal Nezu was watching, his glasses almost fell off in shock. He has wings, Yamada gasped. I thought he was quirkless. How in the- Look closer, the principal insisted. Yamada did, but he wasn't too sure what the principal was implying. He is unsure and unsteady, he explained when no revelation was made on Yamada's part. Not used to this power. This is why I have reason to believe that the boy has only just realized he has a quirk at all. That's impossible, Yamada insisted. You get a quirk at like four, and that's it. Midoriya's quirk appears to be rather peculiar, Netsu continued. He summoned the lightning bolt earlier. He did what? Did you not hear it? I did. That is why I decided to check the security feed. Why don't you go down and speak with him? Nezu instructed in a polite manner that made it sound like it was only a request, one which Yamada didn't necessarily have to fulfill, but he knew better. You are his homeroom teacher, after all, and you are only one of the members of the staff who can confidently communicate with sign language. However, it is a shame that these security cameras don't have a sound system. Look at his mouth. It's moving. Therefore, he's either talking to himself, or perhaps he is singing. But he's mute and quirkless, Nezu smiled in an unintentionally menacing way. But you can't know for sure until you see for yourself. For example, how could one know that Japan is an island if they have never seen the ocean? How could they know the sea exists at all, or the rest of the world, for that matter? My point is, you can either trust in the evidence laid before you by another, or set out to retrieve that evidence for yourself. I believe that the later is the better option in this situation, not only for us, but for Midoriya too, who has just realized he has a phenomenal power after spending his entire life facing a horrid prejudice for not having one at all. Present Mike, meanwhile, was still staring, dumbfounded, at one of his youngest, most feeble students, doing backflips in the air like he'd been flying his entire life. He just nodded senselessly at Nezu's lecture. Once he was sure it was finished, he darted out of the room as fast as he possibly could and sprinted all the way to the hall where Midoriya had hidden himself away in. Panting, he hesitated by the entrance, hand hovering over the doorknob, he could hear the faint echo of music from within. He thought Nezu was kidding when he suggested Midoriya could have been singing. We're flying above the valley below. Present Mike opened the door as slowly and quietly as he could. His mouth hung open as he closed it behind him, not daring to take his eyes away from the student that he would thought he'd be protecting from everyone and everything for these next three years. Not in a million years did he think he'd be facing something like this and he'd just come back from a villain attack at the USJ, not Universal Studios Japan, but the two were very easy enough to confuse. 
The music swelled as Midoriya repeated those lyrics. They were the first words President Mike had ever heard him utter. Here he was, soaring high above him in a hall for hero students, without a care in the world. He dipped and dived, twisting and turning with apparent ease, having the time of his life. Wrap your wings around my body. The boy whooped in glee. How he hadn't noticed Yamada yet was beyond him. Perhaps he was so enthralled with his seemingly newfound ability that his mind simply blocked Yamada out of his peripheral vision. Wrap your wings, wrap your wings, wrap your wings around my That was when he finally caught his eye. The music that reverberated from the little speaker at present Mike's feet continued, but Midoriya's mouth stopped moving immediately, eyes wide with surprise and fear. Yamada faltered before reaching down and pressing pause on Midoriya's phone, letting silence fill the hall once more. Midoriya just hovered there for a moment, before a sudden realization seemed to wash over him and he frantically began his descent. He fell to the ground with a thud, his wings disappearing in a burst of green feathers not far off the floor. Rushing towards him, Yamada fell to his knees by Midoriya's side. The boy breathed heavily and frantically, sitting right in the middle of a large, sprawling scorch mark in the middle of the hall. Hey there, little listener, Yamada said softly to him. He had his knees tucked up to his chest, eyes darting around in panic, as if looking for anyone else who might have heard him. It's alright. Take deep breaths for me, okay? Like this. Breathe in, and breathe out. Okay, and again, breathe in, and out. It took longer than Yamada would have liked for Midoriya to calm down even a little bit. Eventually, he opened his mouth to say something, but all that came out was a strangled squeak. Midoriya grasped his throat like something was strangling him as he desperately tried to force the words out. Hey, look at me, President Mike insisted. Midoriya looked up hesitantly, eyes brimming with tears. You're not in trouble, don't worry. And you don't have to speak to me if you don't want to, he signed, not speaking so the kid wouldn't feel like he'd had to do the same. His shoulders relaxed a little his hands leaving his throat. He closed his mouth and gave Yamada a feeble nod. That was pretty awesome, Yamada added eagerly. Midoriya seemed rather surprised by that. He blinked back the tears, his mouth slightly agape. So, you have a quirk after all. He tensed up again. Wow. It was kind of hard to read his body language and react accordingly. I'm not telling you off, insisted Yamada. Is this a new thing? You looked pretty confident with the whole flying around the place ordeal. New, Midoriya signed simply. So, you can sprout wings whenever you want? That sounds like an incredible quirk. Midoriya shook his head. Right. Principal Nedzu had mentioned a lightning bolt. Yamada glanced down at the scorch mark. How did that work? I, I'm so sorry, Midoriya signed quickly in a jittery manner as he followed Yamada's gaze. I didn't think, but I had nowhere else safe to practice. It was silly of me. I know. I promise I won't do it again and damage school property or use my quirk or- Hey, no need to panic, President Mike exclaimed. The sudden sound startled the kid a little. You're in a hero school. Students damage stuff all the time, and this is just a scorch mark. Seriously, you've got nothing to worry about. He spoke and signed at the same time. I still shouldn't have used the lightning bolt, Midoriya insisted. I was just so excited and I've been wondering about it all day. I'm sorry. If you didn't use the lightning bolt, then I wouldn't have realized you were here, said Yamada, deciding to leave Principal Nezu and his hidden cameras out of the conversation for the time being. And I think being here is a good thing, because now I get to see your quirk, and it's really confusing me. Midoriya laughed. It was a little, very quiet, but it was something. It's confusing me too. That's why I'm here. Do you know what it is? Yamada questioned. Midoriya wavered, holding his hands up as he thought about his response. Singing. Singing? Yamada repeated after a moment. How? He didn't meet Yamada's eyes as he continued to sign. Each song gives me a different power. President Mike thought back to the song he had just heard him singing. It had been about wings, and the boy had consequently had wings is awesome. He didn't even flinch at the raised volume that time. You really think so? Hell yeah. Just think of the possibilities. Well, well, there are downsides too. I only get the powers while I'm singing and for a few moments after I stop. And some sometimes the quirk only kicks in quite late into the song, usually in the chorus, and then gets stronger after that. And then I can't use the same song again for a while. But but I haven't had much time to practice. I don't know what other limitations there are, he explained, his movements jerky and a little difficult to understand, but Yamada didn't mind. Of course there are limitations, Yamada laughed, leaping to his feet. All quirks have their own little problems, but with a power like that, kid, you could become a hero. Midoriya jerked his head suddenly at the words, staring up at present Mike with wide eyes. You think I can be a hero? A smile broke out over Yamada's face. He had met quite a few selectively mute kids in the past. It usually took a lot longer to trust him enough to speak. He wondered if this was Shinso's doing. 
He and Midoriya had grown rather close over the short time in which they'd known each other. Perhaps a friend like that was what Midoriya needed to help get him out of his shell. Although, maybe that wasn't the only reason why he spoke. Yeah, President Mike yelled, holding out his hand and pulling Midoriya to his feet. And it's not just a quirk either. I mean, you're smart. 91% in that entrance exam was no easy feat. And hey, just look at what you did in dodgeball the other day. Not only were you super cool helping out all your other classmates with their quirks, but remember that flip? Holy shoot, no one in the staff room believed me when I said you could do that. Who would have thought you were so athletic? There were tears rolling down Midoriya's face, his bottom lip shaking. It, it's from dance class, he explained shakily. You dance? How can you get any more awesome? Now he was laughing and crying at the same time, trying to rub the tears away, but to no prevail. No, no, wait, let me guess. You play an instrument, don't you? Because if you don't, then that's the next step up. Wait, was that a nod? That was a nod. You play? What do you play? You know what? Tell me later when your eyes have stopped leaking. Sound like a plan? That was when Midoriya threw himself at Yamada in a very tearful, shaking embrace. Careful of the shoulder spikes, Yamada warned Midoriya as he hugged him back. They stood like that for a while, as President Mike waited patiently for Midoriya's tears to run out. They did calm down a little, but Yamada started to suspect his supply was never ending. Did you ever want to be a hero, little listener? President Mike frowned as he pondered Midoriya's dramatic response to such simple words. Midoriya pulled away and nodded tentatively. Well, he started, thinking hard about what to do next. The sports festival is coming up, if they're still going through with it after the USJ attack thing. I think they will. Principal Nedzu thought it would be a good way of showing the world that we at UA are standing tall. Anyway, if someone from general studies shows enough promise, we can consider transferring them to the hero course later in the year. Midoriya rubbed away the last of his tears. His face lit up for a moment, before he turned away and fiddled nervously with his fingernails. But then I'd have to use my quirk in front of everybody. Well, yeah, you need to do that if you want to be a hero. But why? Oh, is it because of the singing? He nodded. President Mike pouted, his arms crossed. That sure was a tricky one. How could the mute kid with a voice quirk possibly learn how to use it? Well, from what I've heard so far... Your singing is about as awesome as everything else I've seen you do, he proclaimed. Midoriya gave him a weak smile. Thank you. All you need is a little more confidence, Yamada concluded. But in such short notice, the kid barely knew what his quirk was capable of, let alone his voice and anxiety issues. It all started with a bit of a light bulb moment. Ever listened to my radio show, Midoriya? Another nod. Well, then you'd know I've always had a bit of a problem with my Thursday shows, yeah? Um, yes. Everything else is all thought out. Guests you know, on certain days, music on Fridays, you know. Every day has its specific schedule, except Thursdays, which changes every week, Midoriya finished. Exactly, President Mike said with a click of his fingers. So, you have problems when talking to most people face to face? Yeah? Well, what about over the radio? Midoriya's eyes widened. You, 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 what? Tomorrow's Thursday, he continued to explain. If you come with me after school, I could take you to the radio station and you could be a guest. How does that sound? Terrifying, he gaped. President Mike laughed. But it would improve your confidence. That that sounds re really great, but I just don't think I can do it. So many people listen to your radio show. No one would need to know who you are, he offered. You hardly speak to anyone, so they won't recognize you. He started kicking at the scorch mark beneath his feet, avoiding Yamada's gaze again. Look, Midoriya, he sighed, crouching down to look up at him. You're a great kid, with an incredible mind and an incredible power. I want to help you. You can be a hero. All you need to do is make this one brave step, and you're on your way. And if you really can't do it, then you can back out. There's no pressure. He looked into his eyes again before reaching up behind him to rub the place where his wings had been. There was no hole in his shirt. It was such an amazing ability. He could do so much good with it. All he needed to do was say, Okay. President Mike blinked. Oh, okay? You'll give it a go? Midoriya clenched his hands into fists, took a deep breath, and nodded surely. Yeah! His teacher cried, leaping up excitably. Good on you, Songbird. S songbird Well, you need a code name, Fledgling Hero. Got a different one? Midoriya hesitated. That was when he thought back to something Shinso had said not long ago. You don't have to pressurize yourself to speak. I can keep translating for you at school if you want. And Cockatoo can, too. Cockatoo? Present, Mike, obviously. And his mind drifted to that passage about little birds singing in the depths of coal mines so long ago. Little heroes that kept singing until the very end. You, you'll be cockatoo, Midoriya stated timidly. Present Mike howled with laughter. Is it because of the hair? That's brilliant. I love it. But what about you? I'll, I'll be... Canary. <laughs>